Okay, good morning. How is everybody this morning? Morning, sir. Tired. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. Right, I know me physically and mentally tired, is that, sir? Yeah, you probably need to take a day off, you know? And, no, and just... I a day off, sir. Every day we are working. I know, but... And then, then we have my former country, we just go plant my Irish name with us, sir. That needs to make my body tired, you know? And okay. my brain tired, you know? So I sleep, I sleep, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. So you not employ somebody to plant your, <laughs> your, your Irish. <laughs> no, so we have enough for this one, you know? Oh, so, well, you have to go delegate some of the work then. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but I, I can imagine, and you know, exam starts next week. Yes. Oh, yes, sir. When we have this exam? Uh, it is on the 9th. That's Nine. a Wednesday. 9 a.m., sir? No, no, at um, 5 p.m. Oh. All right. Have me a long the exam. Nine. Wow. All right. So, um, yeah, they said that we should send the time here to everybody, but uh, so I imagine you got it already. But okay. I will, I will, um, um, send you our date. Yes, sir. All right. So it's actually the ninth at five p.m. So next week Wednesday. Which um which basically means that today is the last class since um exam going to start on the seventh. So today is the last class. So um we have actually covered uh, at the end of today we will actually cover everything that we need to cover um for the final exams um. Maybe in the tutorial session, I will tell you the, the topics that we will, um, that you really need to pay attention to. But we have, I think we have covered everything at the end of today. And what, what we're going to do today shouldn't really take us too long. Um, but um, so we probably will be finishing before 11. But let, let's see how it goes though. All right, so only five of you are here. I guess the others are, are still too tired or too busy. All right, but um, yeah, time is going. So let us start the, oh, and I apologize for starting late. Uh, so I can identify with Mr. Hewitt with the um, amount of things to do and so and so. All right, but let us let us start. Let me see if I can find where I am. I think it's this one, yeah. Who's Brandon? All right, so everybody, um, I had asked you to read up on breaking. Well, I had indicated that breaking was the, the, the topic for this week. And um, information is in the wildy, is in the guru, and is in the Sharkawi, the book that I sent you last week. So um, you can get a good idea of this topic, but still, um, let's just point out a few things. So let me. All right, so we will be looking at um, electric braking uh, as opposed to electromagnetic or mechanical braking. We. Um, then we look at the different types of braking, plug-in, dynamic braking, and regenerative braking. 
uh, we will look at two of them in the shunt motor and two of them in the three phase induction motor. And um, I have exercises here, but uh, it's probably one example. And uh, maybe I will give you some more examples. I have some examples at, at UTEC. I, I didn't realize that I didn't have them here with me, but um, I, maybe during the week, I'll send them to you. All right, so um, we will get through it. This diagram here is representing a DC shunt motor. Um, and we will be looking at that in a little while. All right, so what is braking? Let me let in Mr. Green. So braking is the stopping of the motor by utilizing the motor's electrical circuit. Uh, somebody said something? Uh, so electrical braking or electric braking is different from stopping the motor by the mechanical or electromagnetic means. All right. But both of them are employed in motor applications where quick stopping and holding of the motor shaft are required. So if you can imagine a, an elevator where you need to not only stop, but don't move, then you have both of them. Especially um, the mechanical or electromagnetic one is required. You know, if, if say, boy, the there's something going wrong in the electrical circuit, the motor's electrical circuit. Um, so for example, like a loss of power, then you need um, that me mechanical type of braking also to hold it. Uh, the, for Although it's electromagnetic, there's actually a different supply for that magnetic circuit. So it's, it's not linked to the, the motor's electrical circuit. All right, so this diagram shows some of the equipment that is um, associated with the electromagnetic braking. And I have included a link to a video so that you can um, watch that. It's a very short video, so you, it um, shouldn't bore you. And when you get onto this page, there are others, so you can you know, familiarize yourself with the different types of electromagnetic braking. All right, so one of the types of electric braking is called plug-in. And plug-in is the stopping and or reversing of the direction of the motor by reversing the connections to the supply voltage. All right, so this is being shown here, um, but I have another diagram that will probably show it a little bit clearer. But um, maybe you can see here, so the supply voltage is up at the top here. And this would be your field winding. They call it I shunt, ISH. And then this IA would be going through the armature. Uh, what, so this will be normal operation of the shunt motor on the left. Uh, but during Breaking now uh, during the plug-in. Notice now that what has happened now is that the terminals have switched. So what used to be the, where the positive used to be connected on this side, on the left side, the positive has now switched and is now connected on the right side. And notice that there's also a resistor now in this breaking circuit. Um, so the terminals have been switched to um, to create the conditions for plug-in, all right? Now, when in plug-in, the motor will actually slow down, come to a stop, and then pick up speed in the reverse direction because it, the, the terminals have been reversed. So to prevent the motor from picking up speed in the reverse direction, a zero speed, zero speed switch is used to disconnect the motor from the supply. 
All right. All right. So <clears throat> what the diagrams that you had before, I've kind of um, modified them to look like this. So on the left, we have the motor operating in normal conditions, normal running condition. So this is a diagram up, up to this part, up, up from A to E, uh, F back to B. You would be familiar with that type of uh, diagram for the shunt motor already from drive zone. Now, um, what you should also observe now is that I have a switch here that can operate. It's called a double throw switch. You call it double pole, double throw. So when it is closed on this side, on the left here, it is open. So it have um, two sets of contacts. So close on this side, it is open on this side. All right. And on, on the right side now, notice that I have the supply voltage here also. So it's the same supply voltage. So that's why I name it VS1. So VS1 is here too. So it's the same supply voltage. But what I've done now is adjusted the terminals. So whereas A was at the top here, A is now down at the bottom here. And the same thing for B. B was at the bottom here. B is now at the top here. So I've basically adjusted the polarity of the supply for this side of the circuit. All right, so normal operation, um, the switches are open. So no current is flowing in this part of the circuit. All right. Now, during plugging, the switch on the left here is now open. And when it opens, it closes on the right. When it closes on the right, now this circuit now becomes engaged. So this battery now supplies power through this circuit. All right. So notice that I have um, put in some labels and we will explain them shortly. Um, but these are things that you are familiar with. So, all right, so on the, the left again, we're looking at normal operations and then the circuit, um, the equations that relate to, to this part of the circuit. So VS1 is equal to IF times RF, or VS1 is equal to EA, plus IA1 RA. And these are equations that you would have been familiar with from um, drives one for the shunt motor. All right, so they are here. We, we will need EA, so this is the equation. We're basically just manipulating equation two to find EA, to make EA the subject of the formula. All right, now in plug-in, so the, we're, we're reversing the connections of the supply now to connect to the armature. So the, the instant, so the instant that we open the switch and close this one, this is what happened. VS1 is still existing, supplying the field, right? So the field is still producing a flux. The field current still producing a flux that will be cutting the armature. Right. So VS equal to IF, RF. Now, if you look at this circuit now, you realize now that we have two supply. EA, the induced EMF, is now acting in the same direction as the supply voltage. So you can see that they are in series. This minus is connected to this plus. So the, the two supply now add. So that's why we have VS1 plus EA1. And both of them now combine is driving a current IA2 through both resistors. All right. Now, one of the resistors is the armature winding resistance. And the other one is an external resistance that is chosen to limit 
the current that will be flowing during the breaking. All right, so we call that R external. And R external is usually chosen to limit the armature current to less than two times the rated armature current. All right. Um, higher than that will burn out the armature. So we, we want to limit that amount. All right, one of the things that we normally want to find is, is the value of that external resistance that will limit that current to do that value. So um, manipulating equation three, we, we get equation four, All right? So this would be the equation for um, the external resistance. Um, in the past, persons would have just memorized this formula and write it down, uh, but maybe that's not such a great thing uh, because if you miss something, you may lose a lot of marks. Um, something to point out here. At the instance of plugin, EA would still have the value that it had initially during a normal operation because um, the flux is constant and remember now that flux EA is equal to K phi N. The speed also would not have changed at the instant that you open the switch. So EA at the instant you do the plugin has the same value that it had um, it before plugin takes place. Okay, any questions so far? Are we good? Good, sir. We're good so far. All right, good. All right, now what I want you to do is to observe the direction of the current flow in normal operation. So the current would be flowing from E, from point E down to point F in, um, in normal operation. The back EMF would be operating, it would be going the opposite direction. Now, when you look over here, because the two sources now are acting in this direction, the current changes direction. So IA2 actually, is moving in the reverse direction to IA1. It is moving from F up to E, right? Now that reversal at the armature current actually causes a reversal in the motor torque. That torque developed that we usually calculate, um, that torque now has reversed, right? Because the current has changed direction. So this would actually be a negative torque compared to what it was before. And now because you have this reverse torque acting on the armature, it rapidly slows down the, um, the motor, right? So the, it will slow it down and it will bring it down to, to zero. But if we let the supply remain, then the, the motor will actually start to pick up speed and increase in the opposite direction. So if it was going clockwise before, it will pick up speed and start to move in the anti-clockwise direction. So um, there is a zero speed sh shift, um, I'm getting tongue tied with that word, a zero speed switch that opens on the, um, on the shaft when the speed reaches zero, right? And um, just another reminder here, uh, as the speed decreases, so as the motor speed is decreases, EA will also decrease because EA is equal to K phi N, right? So EA is not a constant. So that's why we pointed out that at the instant of plugging, this is what the value of EA would be. Um, but as the speed decreases, then EA decreases also. All right, 
Now, um, IA2 can be found from this equation. So again, manipulating equation three, you can find IA2. And in some cases, you may be interested in knowing the breaking torque. So the breaking torque, torque again, remember, is equal to K phi IA2. And K is some constant for the machine. Right. Now, again, since EA is changing, IA2 will also be changing. So as IA2 changes, um, so does the torque. So the, the torque will um, will vary as um, as the machine is is slowing down. All right. So, oh, this is just repeating this the circuits. All right. So that is that would cover plugging of the um, the shunt motor. So basically, remember what happens is the reversal of the, of the the polarity of the supply voltage. You could do the same thing for an induction motor by just interchanging two phases. So if you if you switch, say so phase um, Y and phase B, switch them around, so that what was connected to Y is now connected to B, and what was connected to B is now connected to Y. You have the same effect. Right, so plug-in can is also utilized in the induction motor. All right, now let us get to dynamic braking. So in dynamic braking, what happens is that you just disconnect the supply from the armature circuit, and then you let the machine, and then the kinetic energy, that rotational energy in the armature will be dissipated in the external resistance and in the resistance of the armature circuit, all right? So that's what this is saying. The resistance of the armature circuits are RA and R external. All right, so this is showing it too, but I will, um, so here the armature is disconnected from the supply. Here, armature was connected up here to the supply voltage on the left. Um, but in dynamic braking now, the armature is now connected just to the external resistor. Right. All right. But again, I will um, try to make that a little bit clearer. So just as we had before, um, the induction, sorry, the shunt motor, the shunt motor um, operating under normal condition the external resistor. Notice now that the supply voltage is not um, in this part of the circuit at all. So this switch is open and would have had the same equations as we had before, uh, but we'll get into that in a little while. Now, um, at the instant of dynamic braking, the switch here on the left, the double pole, double throw switch opens and closes onto the external resistance, right? So now there's only one source of electricity in this circuit and that's the induced EMF and it pushes current through the circuit, all right? So notice again that IA2 and IA1 are in opposite direction. All right, so again, the equations Vs is equal to IF, RF. Vs1 is equal to EA plus IA1, RA. And we manipulate it again to get EA because we're going to be using it. Now at the instant of dynamic braking, this switch open and this switch closes and then EA becomes the source of, of the electricity around here. So EA would be equal to IA2 times RA plus RX, right? And again, RX is chosen to limit the, the um, armature current to about two times or less the rated armature current. And then to find the external resistance is again now EA over IA this time, 
just manipulating equation three to get equation four. And uh, same things apply before EA, the value that we'll be using to do our calculation is the value at the instant the switching takes place, right? Because as soon as the speed starts to decrease, then um, EA will change, it will reduce. All right. So let's look at a quick example. I wasn't keeping track at the time. Um, a 400 volt shunt motor takes a current of 30 amps from the supply when it delivers a rated load at 100 rads per second. Armature resistance is one ohm and the field winding resistance is 200 ohm. We should determine the value of Rx. So this was taken from one of the book, I think uh, from the guru, that will limit the inrush of armature current to 150% of its rated value. If we use plug-in or if we use dynamic braking. All right, so, so this is motor normal operation. So before plug-in, uh, we're told that the supply voltage, supply current, sorry. So we, it would be the current taken from the supply is 30 amps. And so we're given these values. RF is 200, VS1 is 400, R is one. So we can find IF, VS1 over RF. So that's two amps. And we know I, so we can find IA1. So IA1 would be 28 amps. And then we can use that to find the induced EMF, EA. So VS1 minus IA1, RA, would be equal to the 400 minus 28 times one, 372. All right. Um, so EA is 372. And now remember IA2 now is chosen to limit the current to 150% of rated value. So it's gonna be 1.5 times IA1. So it's, we get the 1.5 just in case anybody not too clear. 1.5 divided, 150 divided by 100 to give me the 1.5. Uh, okay, good. And uh, substituting in this equation, we can find Rx. So VS1 is 400, EA is 372, and IA2 is 42, RA is one. So we end up with um, a resistance of 17.38 ohms. All right, so that is when we use plug-in. Let's see what it is when we do um, dynamic braking. So again, as before, um, the same kind of values. All right, so before plug-in occurs, so the same values as before. All right, so let us see what happens when when we plug, when we do the dynamic braking, sorry. When we do the dynamic braking. All right. So EA is 372 as we had calculated before. And this time we manipulate the equation to get this. So therefore Rx is 372 over 42 minus one. So that is, ends up to be 7.88 ohms. All right. Um, so a quick comparison of dynamic break-in and plug-in and coasting, the time to stop. All right, so coasting would be no brakes applied. You just turn off the power and um, allow the machine to run down by itself. So notice that it's on a different kind of time scale, right? So it would take a long time, a relatively long time to stop. Now with dynamic braking, uh, we kind of have an exponential decay. 
So it is still taking, it's not as slow as no nothing being done, no brakes applied. Um, and uh, maybe within about six time constant, it, it will be relatively slow. Um, I mean, close to zero for dynamic braking. Um, with plug-in door, you can see how quickly it um, it brings it to a stop. So it's in two time constant. And so it's in a short time. Now the braking time uh, has to consider speed of rotation. So the question you probably would see that there was a 100 rods in there. But we, we didn't get into that. It would also have to consider the moment of inertia uh, of the machine and all of those things. All right, but that's a little bit too, too much for us. We, we probably don't need all of that. Um, so, but just to show you that plug-in will actually um, break the machine quicker, or bring it to a stop quicker than dynamic braking. All right. Um, all right. Um, I guess we have about five minutes left or so. All right, so what I will, what I'm gonna just discuss uh, dynamic braking of the induction motor and then we, we break for the um we will be forced to take a break and then we come back afterwards but the, during the break i'm going to ask you to do something all right now dynamic braking of the induction motor so it's a three phase induction motor so during normal operation um the machine would be connected. All the ones would be connected. So notice that, so there is a switch here that can um, move, right? So when it moves to position one, they will be connected to the supply, the power line. So when, so one here, the middle one goes, the middle line goes to, terminal one of the switch, then we connect to the power line here. The same thing here, right? So in normal operation, all the ones would be closed, twos would, and trees would be open. All right, now during braking, remember for braking, we just, um, dynamic braking, we just disconnect the supply from, disconnect the machine from the supply. And then we, we try to reduce the power through um, dissipating the, the power, the energy through resistors. Now, in this case, when one opens, the switch now goes to position two. Both of them go to position two. And position three also get closed. Right? So one, one is is open then position two and three become engaged they are closed now if you look at position three there's a transformer with some rectifiers which means on the secondary side of this transformer we'll be getting through the rectifiers dc current flowing now uh, remember now this switch will be connected to two so flowing through the stator of the induction motor. Flows through this theater and uh, completes the circuit through the center top position here. All right, so, it, so that's one half cycle. In the other half cycle, um, this one operates, send current through to two, send it back through the theater and back to two. All right, so basically what we have now is DC current being injected into the stator. Now when DC current flows into the winding of the stator, it's gonna produce a stationary magnetic field. 
All right. So stationary current, DC current, produces a stationary magnetic field. Um, depending on the number of poles of the, the motor, you will have that amount of poles um, of DC, um, um, DC, so DC magnetic fields. Now, remember now that the motor would, the rotor now would still be moving and they're moving very fast. Now, as the rotor cuts across those stationary magnetic fields, an induced EMF takes place in the rotor. So rotor rotating, cutting across the stationary magnetic field that, that is now being produced in the stator um, has an induced EMF in the rotor. And that induced EMF now is gonna cause current to flow in the rotor circuit. And then that, rotor, that current in the rotor circuit is gonna produce a heat. So the, the power is gonna be lost as heat in the rotor circuit. And uh, that energy, uh, heat is energy. Um, power would be I square R, um, and energy now would be I square RT, would be dissipated in the rotor windings, right? So that is how dynamic braking is achieved in the induction motor, the three phase induction motor. So that is one way, um, DC current injection, there are others, um, if you Google it, you will, you will see them. Or you can also look up in the textbooks. All right, so we will break here and we pick up back at 10 o'clock. All right. All right, so see you at 10 o'clock.